Hi, this is Ben Smith from 5 Minute Sano, and today I'm going to talk about the 60-60 sign for pulmonary embolism. The 60-60 sign consists of two different parts. The first part is that the pulmonary artery systolic pressure has to be measured at less than 60 millimeters of mercury. And the second part is that the pulmonary acceleration time has to be measured at less than 60 milliseconds. Now, it's two different things that you're having to measure, but it's actually three different measurements you have to do to get these two things. If you have both of these two things together, you're actually 94% specific for pulmonary embolism. It's pretty impressive. So the PA systolic pressure. This number basically tells you how high the pressure is in the pulmonary artery, and it is the best marker of pulmonary hypertension. And in this case, we're thinking this is going to be acute pulmonary hypertension, so, we're, so we think it's going to probably be a mild to moderate elevation in pulmonary artery systolic pressure rather than a severe elevation. A severe elevation in pulmonary artery systolic pressure would be more consistent with the chronic pulmonary hypertension. So here we have an echo of a patient who has a pulmonary embolism. They have a McConnell sign, which you can clearly see. And on this, from this apical four-chamber view, we can actually measure our PA systolic pressure. You might think, well, the best way to do that would be with the Swan-Gans catheter. It actually put a catheter inside the heart. But we can actually use the modified Bernoulli equation to help us measure the PA systolic pressure just by looking at velocities in the heart. The first thing we want to do is actually look at the central venous pressure. That gives us our baseline pressure uh, for the RV. It starts out, the, the baseline pressure for the RV starts out at what the pressure of the RA is. That's our central venous pressure. And then we add on to that the difference between the two, the difference between the right atrium and the right ventricle. That's called the tricuspid gradient. So we have to measure both these things. I'm sure you're familiar with central venous pressure. It's easy to measure by just by looking at the IVC in a spontaneously breathing patient. If it looks kind of like this, kind of uh, medium looking, less than two centimeters and uh, less than 50% collapse, that's a normal looking CVP. We consider that eight millimeters of mercury. On this one, you've got a, a ton of collapse on a small IVC. We consider that three. And if we're looking at this big fat IVC with its plethoric greater than two centimeters with no respiratory phasic change really at all, we consider that 15. So these are sort of the three different estimations and you should use three, eight, or 15 for your CVP to estimate your right atrial pressure. If you're on the ventilator, you'll have to use a central venous line to estimate your central venous pressure. So we've got the CVP, we add onto that the tricuspid gradient and we'll actually have our PA systolic pressure. The way you measure that tricuspid gradient, you're actually having to measure a velocity to estimate the pressure in the right ventricle using that modified Bernoulli equation. And this is pretty simple. In a patient who has a PE, they actually get stretching of that RV and they have their tricuspid leaflets pulled apart. So they actually end up with a little tricuspid regards jet. Now, if there's no jet, you can't measure the gradient. But if there is a jet, and you can see that pretty easily by throwing color right across that tricuspid valve from the apical four chamber view, you actually take your continuous wave Doppler and roll it right in the middle of that jet. Make sure you have the color on, put it right in the middle of the jet, which is sometimes eccentric off to the side, and then hit the continuous wave button, CW. And this is what you get. So you get these little swaths of blood, and all you're gonna measure is the peak of that blood flow. When you get that peak, throw it into the equation on your ultrasound machine, and it actually spits out a number for you. Usually the ultrasound machine will take also the right atrial pressure in, into the calculation and give you a PA systolic pressure directly. Here's the formula. If your machine doesn't have the calculation, here's the formula to help you actually measure the PA systolic pressure um, with the measurements that we just did. And if you don't have a calculator, you know, there's a link out right here to the a calculator online on my website, allshineoftheweek.com. So remember, PA systolic pressure less than 60, that's half the 60-60 sign. The other half is pulmonary acceleration time less than 60 milliseconds. Pulmonary acceleration time less than 60 milliseconds. And here's how you measure that. Everyone here is used to getting this peristental short axis view. The base of the papillary is great looking view, nice sort of donut looking LV. But if you slide up a little bit on the chest with the probe, you actually end up with this view right here. That's sort of the Mercedes Benz sign of the aortic valve right there, you have the tricuspid valve, and the important landmark here is the pulmonary valve. So the pulmonic valve right there, as you have the right ventricular outflow tract going over, you can actually measure a velocity through there and measure your pulmonary acceleration time. So once again, we have our view. We hit the pulse wave button. We put that pulse wave just on the RV side of that valve, right in the middle of the valve, and hit pulse wave again. You end up with these little swaths of blood here. You're going to measure from the beginning of the swath of blood to the peak, to the peak velocity. And what you're measuring here is the time. And that is your pulmonary acceleration time. Now, as you see here, we actually have our sweep speed a little bit slow, We're making our swaths kind of narrow, which makes it a little bit difficult to measure. So if we actually increase our sweep speed as high as it'll go, 
it stretches out those swaths of blood as far as we can get it and then makes it much easier to measure. And so you're measuring again from the beginning of the blood flow to the peak and then it's your pulmonary acceleration time. So that's the 60-60 sign. Pulmonary acceleration time less than 60 milliseconds, PA systolic pressure less than 60 millimeters of mercury, 94% specific for pulmonary embolism. That's it for this week's 5-Minute Sano. If you have any questions, be sure to send us a tweet at, at 5 minute sano. And don't forget to subscribe. Go to blog5 minutesonocom slash subscribe and put your name and email address in the little text boxes. And if you want these pushed directly to your smart devices, go to whatever podcasting service you use and type in 5 minute Sano and subscribe. Hey guys, and don't forget, if you want to come hang out with us at Castle Fest in Lexington, Kentucky, go to castlefest2018.com and check it out.